Welcome to this Power Up webinar called Ask Larry Anything, and I'm, <laughs> I'm the Larry that's being asked. My name is Larry Jordan, and I am delighted to have you with us. However, before we start with the questions, I want to bring you up to speed on what I'm learning about HDR, because with the new releases in both Premiere and Final Cut, both applications are saying they support some form of HDR, and I've spent this week trying to understand what that means in English, and I discovered it's even more confusing than I thought. Let's start with some basics. First, HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range Video, consists of three different parts. More pixels, which are greater resolution, 4K, 5K, 6K, and upward. Wider pixels, which means increased saturation, also called wide color gamut media. And brighter pixels, which is increased luminance measured in nits. An HD signal has 100 nits in it. HDR, when we hit the spec, is going to be at least 1,000 nits, 10 times brighter. And to give you a comparison, daylight is in the hundreds of thousands to millions of nits, so we're not going to be as bright as daylight any time in the near future. And I, <laughs> if we are, I'm not sure I want to watch a movie that bright anyway. But in order for something to be HDR, it needs to have greater resolution, increased saturation, and increased luminance. If we take a look at this chart on the right, this is courtesy of Apple, and the broad color triangle, the very outside parameter, that's the colors the eye can see. The smallest triangle in the center is what we currently represent in HD video, which is called Rec. 709, or it's also the sRGB color space. The outer triangle is Rec. 2020. You can see that it's much, much more saturated in the greens and the reds than Rec. 709, but the problem is that we can't display it. Monitors don't exist to display. We don't even have the glass, the, the LEDs or the OLEDs that can display increased saturation, much less the brighter pixels. So we have a compromise space, which is in the middle. It's called P3. This is an incremental step toward 2020, but as you can see, it takes us part of the way there, but by no means even half the way of where we want to end up. This is an important concept is that moving from HD to HDR, though it sounds like it's a switch, and the marketing people would have us believe it's already accomplished, is actually a multi-year incremental step-by-step -step approach. We'll talk about that more in a second. Currently, we can import, edit, and export HDR media in both Final Cut 10 and Premiere. That's a true statement. However, we can't monitor it we can't color grade it, we can't compress it, and we can't distribute it. So while it's true that both Final Cut and Premiere support, quote, HDR in some form, and both of them hedge their bets in their marketing language, there are much bigger problems involved than simply import, export, and editing. Currently, there is no monitor on the planet that fully displays the REC 2020 spec, not even Sony's $30,000 unit. Support for this color space will evolve over time for both hardware and software, but we're not there yet. When it comes to Apple hardware, support for higher resolutions is totally dependent upon the pixel density of your computer monitor. If you're looking at 5K video on a 13-inch laptop, you're not seeing the entire 5K image. Your monitor doesn't have that resolution. But if you move to a 27-inch iMac with a 5K display, yes, you can see every pixel in a 5K image. So while displaying higher resolution is dependent upon the, the pixel density of your computer monitor, displaying high-resolution images is the easiest problem to solve because it simply depends upon the size of your monitor. And I don't mean to say simply, meaning it's not trivial. It's seriously hard to do. But we know how to solve it. The graphics cards that we have today can handle it. The computers we have today can handle it. This one is pretty well under control. When it moves to saturation, though, things get a little bit trickier. Recent Apple computers can display increased saturation levels. That's the P3 in the diagram I just showed you on their built-in monitors. And this includes both recent iPhones and iPads. But P3 is as far as they go. They can't go more saturated than that middle triangle in that image. Researching Apple's website tells me that HDMI ports can 
output wide color space, that's the increased saturation, but it's software dependent. And I'm still learning whether current displays also support brighter pixels, and my suspicion is they do not. When it comes to Final Cut, Final Cut currently imports, edits, and exports media with up to 16-bit depth. However, the issue with this media is not whether the bit depth is supported in editing, but how do we make color adjustments with an accurate visual display? Currently, Final Cut 10 is concentrating on supporting greater saturation rather than supporting increased brightness. When we switch a Final Cut 10 project or library to Rec 2020 mode, we can saturate colors more heavily than we can in Rec 709, which determines the spec for HD. However, Final Cut 10 does not support making brightness changes outside of the Rec 709 color space. So we can increase our saturation a little, but we can't yet start to achieve the brightness levels that are required to meet Rec 2020. When it comes to Premiere, Premiere's working color space is HD, which means Rec 709. It only manipulates colors in the Rec 709 color space. We can edit and export Rec 2020, but we can't manipulate the color. We can pass it through, but we can't change it. Also, Premiere does not support output of Rec 2020 video via HDMI. In order to see increased saturation or increased brightness, we need to use HAA hardware, like a T-Tap, with their latest driver. Premiere also does support Dolby Vision, but only in pass-through mode. It also supports RAW formats, which contain overbrights, meaning nit levels greater than 100, which are shot by Arri and Sony F65 cameras, alongside OpenEXR and MXRAF JPEG 2000, which can contain HDR information. So as you can see, both Final Cut and Premiere are supporting the pass-through of HDR material, but not yet implementing how we're going to color grade it or monitor it. That's still a work in progress. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at the current status of high dynamic range media in both Adobe and Apple software. For the complete version of this training, please visit our video training library. And when you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our library saves you money because you can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, all in depth and all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.